Hey, folks, welcome to Free Press Sports with Carlos and Sean. Thanksgiving edition, Carlos. Although, I don't know why I'm smiling. You um, shouldn't be smiling because... Uh, why not? What, what are we doing? The game's you know? over. We're they, going home. Of course we're smiling. We're going to go see families and you're going to eat some more turkey, that sort of thing? No, not me. No turkey for me. How can you be smiling when this is... I don't want to say it's the most imp- anticipated Thanksgiving Day game in a long time, but it is. So I'm gonna yeah. go. I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Not necessarily because it was the Packers or the Lions, but because the Lions were eight and two for the first time in 61 years, and they were taking a little bit of pride. I'm talking about the Lions fans here, that they had a team the rest of the country actually wanted to watch for a change, yeah. Yeah. and then they went out and played like that. Yeah. Uh, they lose what 29, 22. They fall to eight and three. We'll see what Minnesota does this weekend, but they could only be a game up in the in the NFC North. So uh, it's going to get, it's going to get interesting. I would imagine from here on out the next, what, six games they have yep. left. Yeah. No, it's uh, you know, it was a disappointing game, but you know what? And, and I didn't quite ask, I did ask Ali McNeil in the locker room this, but I mean, they're human. This is the third game in 12 days. It's a lot. And nobody, no player, no team's ever going to want to use that as an excuse on, Oh no, we're, we're superhuman people. We don't get tired. Bruises, uh, fatigue, you know, especially they played two tough games, the shootout in L.A. and the last second lot, uh, win in, against Chicago on Sunday. I mean, that takes it out of you when you have to muster that much effort to win those games. If they, if they were just cruising and throwing in backups at the end, that'd be different. But uh, so those are hard fought wins and it's going to catch up to you. And the Packers just looked like they were more ready. They 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 came out right away with that huge, you know, pass to Christian Watson. And it was uh, they just looked hungry. They looked they looked more prepared and, and willing to win this game. And they have something to prove. The Lions have played really well in primetime games on the spotlight. So I think the Packers wanted to show something like, hey, don't forget about us. We're still here. We're still the Packers. Um, so give them a lot of credit. But, you know, um, yeah, no, I think I don't think anybody saw the Packers going up and just like taking it to the Lions from the beginning and just an insurmountable lead. Really, it was it was surprising. That's 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 actually absolutely what happened. Right. Yeah. They got physically dominant up front. By the way, I don't know. I, I'm trying to remember the exact stamp, but that but the it was the, the ball that Christian watching from Jordan Love was the first play from the line of scrimmage. Green Bay's opening drive, obviously. Uh, was 53 yards, and I want to say that's the most yards. That's as much yards as he's had in any game all season, right? In the in the in the very first play. And by the way, Jordan Love had, I don't know, he had time to run over to Lafayette Coney, <laughs> and and he come back and still throw the ball, right? I, I mean, first American, but yeah. he, he, maybe he does prefer American. But in any case, he he had all day. So I, look, let's let's talk about your headline because you wrote in your. Uh, very, very pungent and uh, observational, uh, really, of the human condition. But uh, <laughs> yeah, just the way you see the world, you know, you, you put your three questions out there. The headline is, this is the most disappointing, I want to say, yeah. disappointing loss of, of Dean Campbell's tenure. Do, do, will you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah just, uh, the, you know, when you consider they're eight and two coming in, kings of the NFC North, they're going to, they're cruising to the title. They ha- they're coming off this last second miraculous comeback. Uh, the shootout in LA. I mean, everything's going their way, right? The Packers, they'd won two out of three, you know, against okay teams. Nothing, nobody great. The Chargers are one of them. The Rams are not a good team. They beat them. So I don't think anybody was expecting them to come here, especially what we saw in Green Bay. Like, oh, the Lions are coming home for a big game. They're they haven't won the last six. Thanksgiving, they're, they're, they're probably going to be motivated. The fans were fired up. Um, they're healthy. I mean, re- um, relatively speaking, they're pretty healthy. Um, it was it was shocking to see that they just were, you know, outplayed. And then they were they got in their own way with the fumbles, with Jared Goss fumbles. You know, they can't get any takeaways, no pressure on, on Jordan Love. They're not, you know, it just it just nothing was going well for them. They even missed a, an extra point. You know, it just. It just didn't look right. Um, and that's what I think is disappointing is for who they are right now. The the bet sec coming in second best record in the NFL, Sean. I mean, to do this, to get beat up by the Packers at home on Thanksgiving, not good. And I, and I, I compared it to like last year's loss in Carolina was really bad as well. Uh, the blowout in Baltimore was pretty bad too, but for who they are right now, for the, for the, the quality of this team, for as good as they are, for how far they've come to get, manhandled and it was not they made it respectable at the end obviously but it really wasn't a close game at all for most of the game so that's why i i just i just couldn't believe i was seeing this performance out of them they got out physical not toughed up front on both sides but I, too. 
No, they had mistakes too, and but some of those mistakes were because they were losing the line of scrimmage. But I think it starts with the offensive line. Dan Campbell was asked uh, after the game, did he? Right. I thought it was it was a it was a good question. Did he went after a loss? He generally points to the offense, and was he being a little bit productive of the defense? Or the implication was, do you expect more of the offense? And he more or less said he did. Right? He, he said because we're and I wish I could remember the exact quote, but it was the idea that. We're built around the offense, and he specifically mentioned the offensive line, and they are, and that's that's the best part of this this team. By the way, uh, Jonah Jackson was missed today. He he's he's a big difference he's maker. Uh, no, for sure. When he's in there, golf doesn't get pressured up the middle in quite the same way, and that's a and that's a huge huge in. You can talk about the trade deadline all you want. Brad Holmes is playing. He's going to have to pay Jonah Jackson. They are not the same offensive line without or, or Frank Ragno for that matter too, but. He's a big, big difference maker, and he's a really good player. And we don't talk a lot about him because Sewell's been so good. Decker's been really good for a long time. Ragnall's been a, a, a Pro Bowl type player, but he's yeah. But he's got injury issues and yeah. so forth. But Jonah Jackson, man, and you, and you can see you watch the game today. Golf was under tremendous pressure. Would he get hit twelve times? Twelve times, and most of that. And now I know Sewell got beat a couple times, which is unusual. Decker did too. Maybe he's been hurt to get a, a little bit. But the worst kind of pressure, obviously, is coming up the middle. But let me ask you this: So, look, the, the offensive line did not play well today. The offense struggled because of they scored fourteen points until a garbage touchdown. Is that fair to call it? Right, right. At the end of the, yeah, game. At the, end of the game. Let me ask you this: So, there are two plays. Now, this is a negative view. It's a, gla- a glass <gasps> from you. A glass half empty view, but. There are two plays from being six and five. They won at San Diego on a last second field goal. Right. San they Diego. The, oh my Lord. Sorry, Los Angeles. Oh Inglewood. The Chargers. The Inglewood Chargers, yeah, yeah. yes. Chicago, we saw the miracle uh, this past Sunday. <laughs> you know, maybe this game plays out a little bit differently if they do lose those last two games. Right. I don't know. I mean, right. so. Look, that's just a couple of plays from six and five. The NFL is often like this. Most of the teams, you're, you're in those kind of margins. The Lions are a good team. Right. But they're they're not they're not great, right? And and there's a difference. So you you, you you got to win. So here's the thing, though: if the, if they come out again, and I'm curious what you think, and play like this, we'll say when they come back, uh, you know, a week from Sunday and play at New Orleans, which you'll be at, by the way, and we'll have to talk later about where you're going to eat. That's very very important, <laughs> and the kind of beignets you're going to get. But no, no, no. But but if if we see a few more of these efforts. A month ago, we were thinking about, okay, they got one team the last six games, of the, you know, the Cowboys. That's not true. The, the Vikings are – Right. The Vikings are coming. They got to play them twice. Are better. The Broncos are playing better. We just saw Chicago with a healthy field. They're, they're at least dangerous, and that game's at Social Field. Yeah. Um, New Orleans won't be easy. I know they're not a great team, but that's not an easy place to play. No. You got six games left. If, you, if you're not careful, you know – you're, oh, yeah. I'm not saying they're going to go one and five or anything, but two and four is out there. Three and three is certainly out there, and yeah. uh, and, and it changes. What, what what do you think of uh, what they're facing? Yeah, I think that uh, this this game should call a lot, of, a lot of stuff into question because you cannot lose this way at home to the Packers. I mean, this is just the Packers are not a good team, and being at home. You know, I, it's just, I, you know, they played four days ago. You know, they're they're probably tired. The Packers did, too. So uh, and the Packers had to travel. I, I just don't I just don't understand. You know, um, this this can they can lose any game. If they can lose this game, they can lose any game, really, uh, for who they have left on their schedule. Well, real quickly, think about who's left on the schedule. Right. Everybody's everybody's as good as what, what Green Bay is today. Even, even the Bears. With a healthy field, right? Absolutely. What you're saying is right about the Bears is it's always hard to win in Chicago. And they, I think the Lions got lucky against the Bears. Um, You know, they just mustered, they just put it in overdrive on offense when they were able to. And the, the problem is the defense can't, they can, they can't. I asked Campbell this, you know, and and can you rely on your defense to take over when you need to, to to make a big stop, to take over the game, and when they, they and he's like, yeah, I believe in them. You know, what's he going to say, really? But if you watch the games, do you believe that the Lions defense can like, oh yeah, put it on us, coach? We're going to save the day. You know, it's like it all comes down to how well can the Lions offense play? How few mistakes can they play? Because you know they're not going to get stops on defense. They may get one here or there uh, or hold them to a field goal or whatever. And they did. They give them some short fields and obviously the the fumble that was returned for a touchdown wasn't on the defense. Um, but it's just not a, it's not, a, it's not a unit that they can rely on. So yeah, any of these games, 
uh, can be uh, can be lost. Uh, now, the three games in twelve days is asking a lot for a team for any team. So, I with with ten games basically or ten days until their next game in New Orleans, I would expect that they can make some adjustments. You know, think about what they need to clean up. You know, m- account for deficiencies on you know the pass rush, whatever it is. Figure something out. Bring an extra rusher or whatever you need to do. Um, but it's that road now is a little more worrisome than it was probably pro- I would say the Chicago game worried me too. Cause that was a little luck, but after the Chargers game, it felt like, all right, they'll just win a shootout if they have to, I guess. But now I don't know that they can really do that. Let's talk more about their offense, but uh, in a second, but let's first take a quick break and then we'll be right back with more free press with Carl says, Sean, free press sports. It, does, it doesn't matter. So you're the free press. Sean, I don't, I don't, Sean and Sean Windsor show. I don't need to say sports because you're the free press. I'm with the man here. We'll be right back with more of the man. We'll, uh, we'll break down that offense a little bit more. Welcome back to Free Press Sports with Carl Sashan. Uh Carl just said to run up and down. I think it's seven flights from the press box down. You got your exercise in. Yeah, I got my stairs. You're, you're feeling better. Mm-hmm. You're feeling better. Yeah. So, look, we, we talk about narratives. You like to talk about narratives and agendas and people having all this in sports. But <laughs> here's where a narrative is interesting to me, especially in an NFL season, especially with these lines. So, they're eight and two before today. Mm-hmm. Before the Thanksgiving game, yeah. first time eight and three, I think. First time they've been eight and two in sixty-one years, which is still hard to get your head around that fact, right? I mean, it's kind of it's almost surreal. Yeah, thinking about sixty-one years for a team to to get to eight and two. We're not talking about seventeen and zero or sixteen and zero right. or some ridiculous right. historical mark. We're talking about eight and two, which like is a, Patriots fans just being like, "What?" what? Like, it, it, even it, Packers fans, like it, exactly. So they're eight and two. So people are on a giddy. They're, they're giddy. They're they're coming in on this. Oh, all this anticipation, excitement coming to this game, but it, it can get away. It can get away in a hurry. And again, I'm not. I'm not saying that's going to happen. But this New Orleans game now, and I know it's what 11, 12 days away, eleven days away, whatever, ten days, is is a big, sneaky, big game. All of a sudden, and, and New Orleans is not, not a great team, but we're going to have to see the offense. I'm not saying what, they're falling apart after one game, but we see what happens if golf doesn't have time to throw. Right, right, and they they ran the ball fine today, more or less. Did, didn't run it so well early, but uh, but what what do you think? Dan Campbell talked about after the game talked about going through studying, trying to maybe adjust some things. But do you do you think it's just that, or do you think there's also this sense of handling the expectation that we're asking some of the players were asking in the locker room, Carl's? You heard him, I, I assume. Our team's coming after you different now because you're eight and two. Yeah, because the vibe, because the story around you know, because mm-hmm. Jim Nance and uh, whoever else is on TV talking to Tony Romo talking about these are Super Bowl contenders. Yeah. Does that get the does that amp up the other guys? Coming oh, yeah. in? Are the lines being seen in a different way now? Oh yeah, you know that. I mean, t- football teams, uh, you know, all sports teams, but especially football teams, use anything they can, right? Uh, you know, so you need grist for the mill and that's, that's what they do. You know, Hey, are these guys, these clowns have never won the NFC North and they're the Kings of the division. How many times have we won it? We're the flipping Packers. You know, we're going to show them we're the Packers. We're going to punch them in the mouth right off the bat with a deep throw, you know, all this stuff. And they did it. They lived up to it. They played like it. They played like the hunger team with the team, you know, trying to punch up, you know, in a weight, in a weight class and, and they they knocked out the bully today. You know the Lions are sort to say they're the bully right now in the division, um, but they are, and and they're going to get every team's best shot. And that is the difference here. And they have been handling it. I mean, they, I think they got the Chargers' best shot. Mm-hmm. They got the Bears' best shot, and um, they had to really step up mm-hmm. to win those games. Mm-hmm. But the Packers today, it just you know it went their way. I mean, they just had a better you know game plan. They control the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, it worked out and. You know, you have to give them credit for that. And, you know, part of it, too, is this is the first division team that they played a second time. There's always a saying it's hard to beat a team twice. But I think the Bear- the Packers were embarrassed 
when the Lions beat them in September. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Lions fans took over the stadium and all that other stuff. So they were like, we're going to do it in their house now. And they did it. And you know, the Packers fans have to feel really good about this. In fact, there were very few Packers. Normally, there's a lot more Packers fans at Lions games. There were very few. There very little green and gold outside today when I was walking in. So I was mildly surprised by it but it's also like man your team's four and six uh you got your teeth kicked in in september by this team you really want to go to detroit on thanksgiving to watch this team get you know beat up um everybody most people produced a blowout for the lions so um yeah that's that's the thing they're gonna have every, they're gonna get most teams best shots um so it's gonna be tricky and i, I don't think the lion i think the lions have a pretty good with jane campbell i think they have a pretty good head on their shoulders for that stuff. They don't like let it get away from them. I think it reminds them a lot of, we haven't really done anything yet. We want to accomplish a lot, but we're not there. So I don't think that's a problem, but the fact is just when someone's motivated to beat you, you know, and you don't, it's hard to motivate yourself to punch down and to, to play the weakling team, you know? Um, So they're going to have to sort of get used to that a little bit more, but, uh, but that's a new challenge for them the rest of the season. It is, and they're going to need some injury luck too, right? I mean, you, you just are. I mean, all, all NFL teams have have a deal with injuries, but they're going to need the best part of the team again is the offensive line. Um, Jared Goff's really good play it flows out from that, and then they have obviously really good skill players around that. But it's all it's all connected. But it starts up front. If if they're relatively healthy up there and intact, then they should be fine. I mean, because the, let's let's be real. The defense is not going to stop. Okay, they're going to have to outscore teams for the most part. Yeah. And and Campbell here, I want you to make your point. But Campbell's also he talked about the turnover margin. It's funny. I wrote about that a little bit the other day. They're one of the worst in the NFL this year. That right. winning streak last year, they were among the best. I think that's actually a good sign that they're eight and three. Um, and what were they? Three to nothing today, or four to nothing? Three to nothing. I can't remember how many turnovers. There were so many of them. Yeah, three nothing. I think it was. Yeah, seven in the last two last two games. But the fact that they're eight and three and among the worst turnover margins in the NFL, I think it's kind of a good sign in a way that they're overcoming. But they can't keep they Johnson's can't keep doing brain. it. That's why you were gonna you were gonna make your your Carlos point. My Carlos point is that as much as you love the offensive line, um, that was one of the problems today. Is that uh, you had. Colby Sorsdahl playing mm-hmm. left guard. And was he left guard or right guard? I forget. I think it was left guard. Um, and he got benched. Um, so, you know, he wasn't, he, he was struggling. He's a rookie, He's, you know. Um, and the thing with, you know, Frank Ragnow's got that just, you know, perpetual turf toe problem. Mm-hmm. And he came out of the game just for a little bit to get it looked at. And, you know, that's the thing we never know is he'll never come and say, Hey, my foot's really feeling bad this week, or I feel better this week with my foot with my toe or whatever. So we don't know when he goes to the game, he plays, he's a gamer, he's a pro, but everybody has varying degrees of health, right. And, and how good you feel, how, how confident, whatever it is, you know, so, uh, that's a concern. Um, you know what the guard, I mean, Jonah Jackson is a big deal. I mean, he's, he's made a pro bowl. He's a very good player. Uh, we disagree on the whole, you know, pay. I don't think you should play and pay interior offensive linemen. Um, you shouldn't draft him the first round either. Um, but that is, a, that is concern. You're right. It's important. They need players there, but you need to be able to draft them in the second round or later. Well, that, I mean, that's a different conversation. Once you have no and they're this good, you got to pay them. No, you don't, Especially you don't when Jared, as yeah. long as Jared Go- Goff is on this team and this quarterback, yeah. they, they better have this line, right? Or he's not going to be the same if you player. Can't, if, you can't, if you can't find an interior offensive lineman in the second round as a GM, get out of the business. You have no business in the NFL. Well, but no, they're not. You, you act like you are paying you, agency. You act like they're all created equal. No, he's not going to go make $100 million or whatever, but, but, you, but they're not all created equally. If Jonah what, what, Jackson was a every year all pro and destroying people or whatever, which has probably never happened in he, the history of he, the NFL, but like, come on. No, he's really, really good when he's healthy. The problem is the health. And, and you're going to have, I mean, that's the nature of this game too. But in any case, the, for right now, for this season, the team's built around the offensive line. You can argue about should they move on, they, they go down a different direction a couple of years from now, re- reconfigure what they're doing, a different kind of quarterback, whatever. Those are different questions. But for this year, for them to get to the playoffs and win a game, maybe do some of the things they're hoping they can do, it's, it's, it's about the offensive line. That's where it starts and stops. And today, they were not good at all. And it, and it showed. Well, that's another question. Why didn't you know Brad Holmes go uh, – 
get somebody at the trade deadline, though, if he was concerned about health. They already lost Waitai. Mm-hmm. So go get someone who's a borderline starter, right? For this year, if that's what you're built around, if that's your, what your strength is, you're a Jonah Jackson injury away from really compromising your strength. Against a good team. Uh, with, with, a, with a good passion, well, right? Yeah, 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 in the playoffs, exactly. if you want to do exactly. it in the playoffs. And that's, that was the problem with the trade deadline. All the criticism that I had about it was, uh, yeah, you can win games against maybe the Bears and the Chargers, right, With without a, a second, you know, really capable edge rusher or a safety or, you know, defensive back, whatever. But you're going to play really good teams pretty soon that'll either make the difference in your playoff seating or definitely when the playoffs come, you're going to play some good teams. You're going to need those borderline elite players who make a difference and this is your last chance to get one and they just didn't do anything so now good luck you know with uh tracy walker back there and when you could have had kevin byard well they're hoping that uh cj cj Gardner johnson comes back to, he's not coming back no he's not, he's not coming he, maybe if they get to the super bowl he'll come back or yeah whatever. right for this yeah. for the parade yeah. he'll be there for the parade there. Yeah. no 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 that's, yeah, that's, that's the other thing we don't want to relitigate everything obviously they they tried to make the defense a little bit better in the offseason they got some interesting <laughs> pieces and they just immediately had bad injury luck right. and their second best pass rusher they lost him almost immediately their best safety maybe their best uh, secondary uh, player in general but it, it, it hey that's how it goes right it's just they weren't trying to become a dominant defense this year they were trying to become an okay defense this year right. and the injuries have have kept that from happening you know i no, i don't know if they've been healthy would they've been average or not who knows maybe they've still been terrible but that's that's just kind of where they are right now that's who they are they're gonna have to outscore people um, they're going to have to have some health. I think they're obviously capable of playing a lot better than we saw today. But uh, – and maybe maybe you're right. Maybe it's the four days. But, again, you know, you get to eight and two, you just – you start thinking in a certain way. And um, to watch this is a bit of a letdown. But it's – it's look, it's not over. They beat New Orleans and all of a sudden it's – you know, they're nine and three and – the conversation is different. It's just a, it's a week to week business. Yeah. The story is going to change by the week. Yeah, it's just it's just where you are. But the season's not quite over, even for you, right? Yeah, I mean they're 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 still a capable team. I don't expect them to implode or anything like that. Uh, they're just not going to roll to the division the way probably we thought they might. Um, you know, so and and you know you have to remember to you know other teams kind of figure things out i don't know if any of them have hired connor stallions or anything like that but <laughs> but they figure things out especially when you see a team a second time so that will help um but i do think that this little bit of a break you know um 10 days until the game i think i think and like i think i told you coming out of halftime ben johnson does make some better adjustments usually at halftime and this is kind of their halftime they're going to have 10 days of a break and you know dan campbell's going to be like you know grinding through game film tonight probably or whatever as soon as it gets home so um they're not going to take this lightly you can tell that it was disappointing for them um and uh but you know what maybe maybe they can take it as a learning step and like hey let's not let this happen again remember green bay they we we were eight and two and look what they did they came in and they they handed us our butts so we can't let that happen we can't take teams lightly anymore no 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 they can't they can't do that at all i think that's uh pretty obvious I, i'm surprised uh not surprised it's nice to see how positive you are oh, and you. just overall you know what i mean but you need to yeah, exactly we need to uh we need to get you home to your family. We got to finish them right, and we want to. We've taken up a, enough of these f- poor folks' time. One last quick, quick thought, if I may. Jamison Williams uh, was used a little bit they're differently out. today. They're well, out. they used him on a couple of crossing routes. He, they, you can see, you're talking about Ben Johnson. You can see him. He's on the field more, first of all, and they're starting to bring him in for not just uh, blocking on short third down run run plays, you know, because he's actually a, a pretty sneaky good blocker for his size. Yeah. But they're using him a little bit more. And so that that made, that's maybe one small encouraging thing taken out of the game that you can see it's they're going to have more to work with. Maybe Ben Johnson will take those uh, – the great guru will take that 10, 11 days he's got and find even more ways. But that that would be my one little – if you're trying to find something positive, he's coming. Did you – didn't you write about him last week? I did. Okay. So you going to write about him again? No, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, he is. He's uh, – I mean, Dave Burkett noted that uh, on their first touchdown uh, drive when uh, Sam Laporta scored on, on a pass. Uh, but before that, he'd had a long uh, play, a long catch down the sideline. And Dave mentioned how uh, or noted that uh, Jameson Williams made that happen because he took two defenders attention away and that isolated Laporta on the outside one on one and made it happen. Now, that's Ben Johnson drawing up a play and Jameson Williams. You it's know, a threat of his making speed. it happen. And he'd caught a ball a couple of plays before, right? 
to start yes. to start off yeah. to start off on a crossing pattern. So yeah. no, yeah, no. So and later on, he caught a really nice uh, deep ball, and it was he had to catch it with his with his hands, not a body, oh, not used, his body. He used his he used his hands, and then he fought for more yards and spun around, and people liked it. And I think it's nice that he's people are cheering for him. You know, I like that he hasn't had any setbacks, no issues, no drama, um, no weird stuff. So that's a lot of credit to him for either growing up or the Lions uh, taking someone who's really smart, who advised them to give him a mentor, maybe uh, to help guide him a little bit. Always listen to Carlos. Yeah. I don't know who that was, but it was someone smart. I can't remember. Yeah. Someone, someone very smart. Yeah. Someone smart who wants to get out of here, by yeah. the way, too. Right. Now. So it was uh, it, it was it was encouraging. Um but uh, yeah, I mean that's that's definitely a positive. Uh, the run game continues to still be effective. Yep, so yep. even despite not having full health on the offensive line and not being able to protect the quarterback, they did open up some holes for their their two backs. So I think that I think that what one my prediction is when they look at this tape, when Goff and and Ben Johnson look at the tape, they're going to say, "Listen, we got to." When we know we're going in here without Jonah Jackson, without you know, when we're starting, you know, rookie yeah. lineman. We got to be aware of pressure, where it's coming from, and be ready to flush out faster and burn the ball. Because he got he got called for unintentional grounding, uh, the kind of borderline fumble, forward progress thing. You know, you know, with his arm uh, momentum. I mean, he's just got to be a little bit more aware of like, hey, if the pressure is going to be coming more. I got to play safer. They can never find a, the a rhythm, right? They can never get in a groove. Right. They can never get connected uh, defensively. Obviously, the pass rush of the coverage, that's been an issue for a few weeks. But offensively, they just could not find that what we've right. that groove that what we uh, used to what we're used to seeing from them. And uh, it's not that they weren't aware that the Packers don't have some, you know, Rashawn Gary for one. Frank Clark, I think uh, their play, percentage play. is really low. No, but they there. do, which is odd because they've got some they got some talented guys there. Everybody's but got but talent. but they did talk. Do the Lions? Do, do the Lions? I would say uh, Aiden, 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 Aiden Hutchinson's pretty good. Aline McNeil's pretty good. No, McNeil is very good. Uh, Pasco could be good down the road, but but real quickly to to just to wrap this up here to your last point. Yes, the um, the idea of anticipation is part of what makes Ben Johnson so good, and there's no way they didn't talk about that. But listen to a couple of the players and the coach afterwards. They, they seemed slightly surprised that they were so good at rushing yeah. and so effective at rushing. Yeah. And then they couldn't adjust to that. So, look, New, New Orleans is going to be a slightly different kind of test. Not a great offense, but they do have some defensive nastiness to them. And they're going to have to figure that out. they got a lot of time to do it. Yeah. A little bit of extra time, I should say. Well, you need to go right. I need to, need to I, go eat. I, I, I guess I need to go right. Um, <laughs> you know. But uh, let's 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 get out of here. What do you say? Sounds good. Okay. All right. We will be back uh, next. What next week? I, I'm confused. Yeah, it's week. a holiday. But yeah, we'll be back next week. We'll probably have a road edition if you want from New Orleans. It depends. Well, we'll probably record on what, for Thursday. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. And maybe we will we'll somehow technology will keep us connected while you're in New Orleans. I think that'll be nice. Sure. We want to thank you for listening. Uh, mostly to Carl's, maybe a little bit to me. And uh, we don't need to thank anybody else. No, I don't think so. No, we're, 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 we're good. We're good. <laughs> All right. Until uh, until next week when we return with uh, more Free Press Sports with Carl's and Sean. Thanks for joining us on this uh, lovely Thanksgiving holiday. Mm-hmm.